CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular. Raising the bar. Well, as evening descends upon the city of St. Louis, we look out over the Gateway City with aerial coverage provided by Monster. Today is the day. After 20 minutes of play inside the Edward Jones Dome, our halftime score, national semifinal number one, Louisville trailing Illinois by a score of 31 to 28. And uh, I'm Greg Gumbel. I'm joined by Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis. Welcome to Singular at the Half. Look at the first half numbers, some interesting numbers here to say the least. Both teams shooting about the same. Illinois has hit twice as many three-pointers and is out-rebounding the Louisville Cardinals by a small margin. What about the play inside, Seth? Well, how about the fact we got two great defensive teams and one turnover on each side. And really, Louisville felt like they could attack inside. That's exactly what they have done. The points in the paint differential, 14 to 8 in favor of the Cardinals. Ellis Miles has seven points. He only averages 10 on the year. And this is what Louisville really thought they could do is drive the ball. The coaches told me during the week they felt like if you could deal with Illinois' first line of attack, get to the rim, that's where they're weak. And that's why this game is close, even though Francisco Garcia Clark is not shooting the ball well. Well, certainly Louisville has done a nice job getting the ball inside, but Illinois has been able to forge to the lead because of their ability to knock down the three. They took 19 three-point shots in 32 attempts. That's far too many. But it was available against the zone defense that was slow getting out to shooters. Darren Williams knocks one down. Luther Head, the skip pass now, the extra pass. Jack Ingram off the bench. I still think Illinois is going to have to complement and supplement that three-point shooting with attacking inside. But the early foul trouble to Roger Powell hurt that attack a little bit. All right, Clark, let's talk about what else you saw out there in the first half. Well, one of the ways to try to beat a zone defense is to try to beat it down the floor, get opportunities in transition. And we're going to take a look at that here. Louisville is going to miss a dunk opportunity. Otis George can't finish the follow, but Illinois comes the other way. We're going to pause it right there. Darren Williams has the ball. I circle him, but I also circle Francisco Garcia, who has lost sight of D. Brown in the corner. As a result, the ball gets moved to that side of the floor, and D. Brown is going to knock down one of those six three-point shots. Take a look. Transition opportunity. The defense not able to be set. Miscommunication and a wide-open three for Illinois. All right, so at halftime, our score is 31-28. to 28. Illinois with the lead over Louisville. Now, an impressive upcoming Michigan State Spartans will be playing North Carolina. And there's a look at the Spartans who have arrived here at the Edward Jones Dome in their locker room as they await the start of their game. Meanwhile, it's a 31-28 lead for Illinois over Louisville as we look ahead to the second half. We talk about second half adjustments, but is there much you change out there for either team? Well, I think for Illinois, they've got to get a better diet of shots. You can't continue to shoot 60% of your shots from the three-point line. They've got to get established inside. Roger Powell has to stay on the floor more than five minutes in the second half. For Louisville, I think it's simple. Try to get Palacios off and also try to get Garcia to tone it down a bit and knock down some of those shots. Yeah, the problem with Illinois is that the three-point shot is such a part of their personality. How much can you go away from what's worked at this point? I agree they need more balance. Clark makes a great point about the Louisville freshman Juan Diego Palacios scoreless here at halftime but he's the kind of offensive talent that can change the character of a game if Louisville decides to go to him. All right guys three points is the difference at halftime. We thank you for joining us on singular at the half. Jim and Billy are back with the second half of Louisville and Illinois here on CBS after this. CBS Sports presents singular at the half sponsored by singular raising the bar. Jim Nance with Billy Packer back here in St. Louis, and Illinois leads it 31-28. Louisville has not led at any point in this game, and Billy, let's take a look at our Pontiac game changer. Well, we talked about the zone busters, and here's a good way to beat the zone. Get the ball inside, as Williams does. As the zone collapses, look outside, and of course, with all those good perimeter shooting, Powell has a lot of choices. This time, an offset by Williams. When he offsets, which is the right thing to do, and steps back out, he's got the wide open look for that jumper. Illinois and Louisville, second half to start when we come back. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's national semifinals is sponsored by Burger King. Warner Brothers Pictures House of Wax. Coca-Cola and by Pontiac.
All right, as they take the floor for the second half, Billy, let's uh, review your game analysis. Well, I think Illinois has done a fine job from the outside, maybe taking too many shots. They've already taken 19. They only average 22 threes a game, so they are really going to the outside with the shot. So far, fairly effective. Quiet stars, and they have been quiet, except I think Miles done a fine job putting the ball on the floor and taking it to Illinois. And then when you start talking about Cardinals points taken, they have done a tremendous job. Four assists and only two, uh, one turnover. A terrific job with ball handling. And Garcia is not winning this battle at this point. No, he isn't. Uh, Luther Head is uh, ahead statistically. Garcia just one for eight. Let's see if he'll put it on the floor and get that third foul on Williams early in this half. Boy, I would think he'd be the key for this half. Absolutely. Garcia, one of eight in that first half. That's it for Louisville, which never led. Outside, O'Bannon with the three. They come right out of the locker room and tie it. Nice offensive set that time. They used Garcia to take Williams out of the action. Dean with a hand check. Right at midcourt, Dean with the check. And let's take a look at the power aid first half stats here, Billy. Well, field goal shooting percentage, not much of a factor. I think that assist is very, very important in the fact that Illinois, although they have the assist, which have led directly to points, you see the points in the paint. Nice job by Louisville taking that ball to basket, and they have picked up some fouls on some key players, primarily Williams and Powell with two each. And that last whistle on Dean, his first. Louisville not in any foul trouble whatsoever. Here's that 2 3 zone again. The long arms of the Louisville players have caused some problems there. And Darren Williams, remember, he hit the first shot of the game, a three. He is 0 for 4 since that time. Nice skip pass. Williams thought about it. Gets past Dean, who's able to help force the steal. Palacios, who has not done anything in this ball game, did a pretty good job defensively there. Quick shot, O'Bannon. Probably not a good shot, Jim. Nobody down underneath. We've got a flow in the ball game going right now. Tie score. You can get a better look than that. That turnover on the last trip by the Illini, their first in 18 minutes. And Powell back on the floor. Saddled most of that first half with the two fouls. And a second turnover. Up ahead. The ground, though. He's right, right there. And he reached in, and they got him with the arm. Boy, how about that speed of Brown? Brown saying, wait a minute. It was clean, and it was off O'Bannon. How about that hustle? Fine play. Brown. There, there's not but maybe two or three guys in all of college basketball that ever could have been at that spot. He is so explosively quick. That is his second, however, and that'll send Larry O'Bannon to the line for two. Now you have Brown and Powell and Williams all with two fouls. And Garcia, who's standing right in front of us, ought to really be aware of that and try to take one of those guys to the basket. That gives Louisville its first lead here at the final four. Ingram coming off of that bench right away. And O'Bannon with five points in the half and the Cardinals in front. Talk about the zone busters, Billy. Here they are, the three stars, the three guards. I think uh, Clark Kellogg made a good point. You do not want to rely exclusively taking 60 to 70% of your shots from out there. I think if you're Illinois, you want to get the ball in the middle of this zone now that Ingram's in there are Powell and try to make some maneuver inside. Powell breaking up. Didn't time it properly. The line eye finding itself behind for the first time in this game. Second time. Powell broke wisely. Here he is in the middle. Oh, three on the shot clock. Had to take oh, it. He hits oh. it. To give him the lead right back. Had to take it, Billy. He really did. He was moving well on the inside. That's only the 48-3 he's taken all year. So we're not talking about Powell, one of the zone busters, but he did the right thing at the right time. Miles working over Ingram and almost tipped up and in by Powell as he was boxing out and the ball bounced up, but back to Illinois. Oh, nearly stolen O'Bannon. How about two straight? How about following the shot? How about that? Against the zone, there is never as good a block out principles as it is man to man. Powell, as soon as he hit the floor, took right off for that rebound. The Reverend knew exactly what he wanted he to do, didn't did. he? Oh, good lob. Over the top, into O'Bannon, and stolen away. Alina. And here's what they love to do. Transition basketball to the corner. Brown, he's only hit two from here in the first half. 
And not this time. Yeah, Brown did not follow through very well on that shot, Jimmy. He's had a wide open look. But that's the kind of game Illinois loves to play. Transition basketball. Boy, look at Dean. Find a seam. Miles underneath. Kicks it back out. Dean will take it. Fade away. Yes. That's a two. And pretty nice job that time by Miles. Realizing Ingram had good position on him. Dean picking up a little tempo here right now. Who's that good for? Well, I, I think it helps Illinois. I think if they can move this ball down the court quickly, they won't have to face that 2-3 zone in position. Aaron Williams on the drive, and first outside Dean whistle for that one. His second. Watch Powell hit the floor and come running right away on this play to follow up. You know, that's not something you see very often. A player miss a three and then dunk his own miss. Well, what he did so well, Jim, as soon as his feet touched the floor coming down off that jumper, he realized it was no block out, had a clear path to the basket. Smart play on his part. Powell making up for this time in that first half. Man-to-man -man defense. Yes. Powell blows by. Yeah, right by Palacios. Uh, Powell, and this is what is so interesting about this Illinois team, and Louisville for that matter. All five starters score in double figures, so you can be worked on by anyone on the floor at any time. Jenkins. Jenkins drives. Tip up Miles. Jenkins doing a good job coming off that bench in the first half. Picks right up here in the second. Well, out with the last seven points for the Illini. That, that middle is open of that zone. Whenever Illinois gets it in there, something happens. There's another example. Well, reach in and stolen away. Jenkins bounces it over to Dean. He'll go ahead and fire it. And maybe shouldn't have. Williams looking up ahead. Brown was tempted. <laughs> it's Ingram off the glass short. Powell has taken over this ball game inside. Going to be a foul first here on Louisville. It's on Garcia. And how about Roger Powell? Rick Pitino saying his pride level is right out of the sky right now and having more fun at this Final Four than any of the other trips that he's made. This is his fifth with three different programs. First man in the history of the college game to take three different teams to the Final Four. Only one of four coaches that have taken four teams to the NCAA tournament. Setting up a legacy that uh, could go unmatched, particularly if he could pull off be the first guy to win championships with two different teams. So Kentucky to the promised land in his fourth year. Fourth year at Louisville as well, but he sees Powell doing so much damage to his Cardinals right now. The last nine points scored by the Illini, all courtesy of Roger Powell Jr. And that's a man that committed to his school when Lon Kruger was the coach at Illinois. Wow, so back, he's been around a while. Yeah, back door. That was a blown trip for Louisville. They had it inside, and Dean unable to convert. You know, Louisville getting a lot of good looks, and particularly in that first half for Garcia, but he has not gotten untracked at all here, Jim, in this game. He's got to become more aggressive. And that's Ingram. And inside that zone goes Illinois. Instead of relying strictly on the three, they've gone inside, and they've really been effective. And they're getting some energy you can see on the defensive end as well because of that scoring. Still waiting for Garcia. He's got to put the ball on the floor and become aggressive with it. He's been much too passive in the second half. Good step out. He brought in George. Gave him quality minutes first half. From the corner, that's a three by Jenkins. His second of the game. Well, we've seen good play off the bench by some Ingram and Smith in the first half. Jenkins, I thought, on both ends of the floor has played well. Again, they go inside that zone. Tremendous adjustment by Bruce Weber here. Stolen. Here he is, Garcia. Cross-court pass is too long. Ooh, that could have been the third on Williams. Puts it up and in. Francisco Garcia. And Jim, that may spark him to realize he's got to become more aggressive with the ball. 17 minutes and 53 seconds of playing time between baskets. But he's on the board here, and the game is tied. You'd think that's a pretty good sign for Louisville to have Garcia not having this kind of a ball game. Powell again. He knows he's hot. He's got that feeling, and he hits another three. 
He has now put up 12 of their last 14. I guarantee you that is not something on Rick Pitino's scouting report that he anticipated at all. That Powell would be the man to beat his own buster. And believe me, his scouting reports are extensive. Yeah, he said he watched every single game on tape this season of Illinois. During the week this week, Beacon and a foul on Ingram. You know, at the other end of the floor, in that zone for his defense, Patino talking this week about how he tries to activate his players. The <laughs> stomping of the foot to alert his team that somebody is open against their zone. But, you know, that may be a technique that he's using, but I'm not buying into it. You don't think no, they're... No, no. You mean they're not buying into <laughs> well, it? No, I... You know, I think that Rick maybe he's going to one step too far there, maybe one bounce too far. How would you react to One it? firm step? Yeah. And if I was Bruce Weber and had heard that, I start stopping whenever it's closed, you know? <laughs> You'd have a way to offset that strategy. Mix up the cadence from the other end. Jenkins will shoot one more, and Powell is going to have a little breather here. But Rick Pitino is kind of the modern innovator as Dean Smith was all those years. He will come up with some new things and new wrinkles. I don't know why that foul, Billy, on Ingram, his third. Now, we may see Smith come off that bench. I'm sure those assistant coaches are going to point that out to Coach Weber. Smith had a pretty good, solid first half. Ingram stays on the floor with the three. Powell down after the hot stretch. And the shift to man-to-man. -man. Jenkins on Williams. Nice back screen, double back screen. Here's Ingram. Takes the three. Head wants the baseline, and foul on Miles. And Jim, you were pointing out to me, hitting me in the shoulder, that Rick Pitino <laughs> was stomping his feet. Let me point something out to They're you. They're not in the zone. They're not in the zone. <laughs> so I think Rick might have been playing with the reporters a little bit. On Obviously, that getting, trying to get his players' attention. <laughs> and he gets pretty far out there on the floor, too. Yeah, we noticed that against West Virginia. Head, three point shot. How about that one? And he's back up to an eight-point margin. Now, Jenkins handling the ball primarily, and Rick Pitino wants a timeout. And he called out with his hands, not his feet. 48-44. Illinois, 70% shooting in this half. That's Ingram. Powell's added the big ones. How about that for the seventh straight year? We have a Final Four comprised of two teams from the same conference. And now for the first time, we've got two number one seeds there. Remember 93 when we had three number one seeds? Yeah, first time Tough since 02. We saw Bush Stadium there, the home of the Cardinals, one last year. Meanwhile, will this be a home for the Cardinals of Louisville on Monday night? And they're battling here with Illinois down four. Dean. That offensive, that offensive set has worked extremely well for Louisville today. Good luck. Dean's got to make that shot. Back to the 2-3 zone. Powell remains on the bench for Illinois, as does Dee Brown. And Darren Williams has had a quiet game point production. Why sets up, though, Ingram. He gets the assist, Ingram the basket. How valuable has Ingram and Smith been as the alternative shooters inside that zone in this ballgame? Well, I mean, it's Ingram, it's Smith, and it's Powell. Who right. could have imagined it'd be those three? Well, I think that's a great adjustment by Bruce Weber to go inside the zone as opposed to counting strictly on perimeter shooting. There is a lot of room inside that 2-3 zone. Miles wanting it inside, and he gets it. And on the other hand, if you're Louisville, you've been able to put the ball on the floor, penetrate, and score. Garcia is not in the ball game right now, taking a little bit of a rest. I'm kind of surprised he's not out there because he just started to get some momentum. We'll be checking in Palacios on the next dead ball, and he's had a quiet day also. Basically, the non-existent Jim, beyond quiet. Ryan handling it at the top. Again, inside, and then the kick out. Oh, Williams down and out, tipped around, and Miles chases it down. O'Banner, oh, he'll take it to the paint. Kick it back outside. Dean, three. Good job. Good Senior O'Bannon understanding that he didn't have to take that shot. Down six just seconds ago. It's already back down to one. They keep clawing back, and they don't let Illinois get it too far 
Out in front. Did he get the timeout in time? No. They say he was on the line going back to Illinois. Miles was trying to signal for the timeout. Didn't get it. McBride telegraphed that, that pass inside. Luther Head hits it. Hey, Billy, the votes are in. The CBSSportsLine.com poll, the game of the tournament. The fans say West Virginia Wake. And that one went on to about 1 o'clock in the morning. Tremendous uh, game. Chris Paul fouled out of that for Wake Forest, the All-American. And Theron Downey, the senior, stepped up and kept that game alive. Well, what would be your pick? You know, I think with everything on the line, I, th I probably would have voted for the Arizona-Illinois game. How about you? We haven't seen it yet. Still to come. Oh, it's still to come? Still to come. Is that okay? Oh, oh, oh I like that. <laughs> you shocked me. I wasn't I wasn't feeling that one out. Nice job. Hope. No, I would have to go Arizona, Illinois with you for those played to this point. And Luther Head tiptoeing around midcourt just fine. We've got regular starting lineup back in the mm -hmm. floor. Yep. Coach Weber had an opportunity to rest his guys just to keep them fresh. Let's see if they still keep attacking inside this 2-3 zone. For Louisville as Garcia is still on the bench. Well, under 10 minutes right now. I don't think he can rest much longer, Jim. He's got to explode in this game if you're Louisville. Brown with five on the shot clock, back of the rim. And Powell's in the right Ooh. spot. Dean tipped it to him. And Miles got by with what could have been a foul and a three-point opportunity. Here comes Garcia. But Roger Powell dominating in this half. 16 for the game, 14 coming in this half. Now, Jim, when you've got a team that's totally unselfish, you've got a team with five starters at all average and double figures, any guy can step up and have the big game, and that's what Powell's doing now. Miles, room to operate. Dean, three. He's having a quiet, pretty solid game. As but 12. they need Garcia in the game. He's up and ready to come back in. They need his explosive scoring. Another three. And Luther Head delivers again. There's no timeout right here. I think everybody expected there was a timeout. Well, there was some debris on the floor at the other end, but Roger Powell, he's hitting shots from the outside. He's following up his misses. He's hitting the offensive glass. He's driving on the Cardinals. 6 of 7 in the half. And as, as I said, he's a two-time Big Ten All-Tournament player. Very much underrated. Solid. But nobody on this Illinois team, a team that really gets along so well from the standpoint of being unselfish, nobody on this team tries to play outside themselves. When there are opportunities, they take advantage, and that's what Powell's doing here in the second half. Right now, if Garcia has got to touch the ball. He's got to become a factor in this game for Louisville. Jenkins falls, Miles in trouble, and it's taken away by Luther Head. Oh, he should have passed back. Oh, wow, look at Palacio sore to get it back. That was not a good play by Head. He had a three-on-one situation, should have thrown it back. Now it's Head on Garcia, not Williams. Williams had the two fouls. I think Head's a better matchup for Illinois. Got a little bit more size. That's up Dean, three, short. Faded on the shot. Well, it's been this kind of working margin most of the game. Largest lead has been seven. Right now, it's at six. With eight minutes to go in the first semifinal. All right, Jim, I think you're going to see Louisville, if they're not successful, stop and get out of the zone and go man to man. Because Illinois being extremely patient, such a good passing team, they found the holes now in this zone. Example, Luther, he's hot. And he hits again for the third time in the half. Rick Pitino's got to get out of the zone. He's got to go man to man. This Illinois team really is a smart ball club. Timeout, Patino and Louisville. Largest lead of the game, the Illini takes it to nine.
and Nance with Billy Packer here in St. Louis and Illinois first got the added fuel the production from Roger Powell and now Luther heads hit three threes and look at that Jim 11 for 28 look let me put something in perspective the three-point shot came in at 87 Denny Crum said he hated the three-point shot in the whole year they only took 87 did Louisville and here we have in this game maybe the reason he hated it Illinois has taken 28 already and have the lead. And of course, one of the first proponents of it, and one of the first men to really use it to his advantage is <laughs> now the Louisville coach, Rick right. Pitino. Can you imagine on the year only taking 87 three-point mm. shots? This year, Rick Pitino's team has taken 886. And that's how he got his Providence team to its final four in 1987 with Billy Donovan tipped inside. Powell brought down by Miles. Oh, great block by Miles, two-handed. And he is, is uh, Powell okay? Yep, they're tangled up. But it's going to be a Louisville ball, and both players are up there just fine. Cardinals will have it when we come back to St. Louis. Billy, you were marveling at how Bruce Weber, just in his second year, coming by way of Southern Illinois, and a longtime assistant to Gene Cady at Purdue, and one year for Cady at Western Kentucky long ago, how well this man can coach. Oh, he's done a terrific job, and you know, I really believe in his heart that he knows that he wishes Gene Cady could have had that opportunity to get to a Final Four. He uh, worked with him for so long at Western Kentucky, as you said, and then, of course, at Purdue, and Gene has had an awful lot to do with his philosophy. Well, this week he was uh, saying that he really felt like Gene deserved so much more than, than he did being here. With all the years that Katie put into it, his great career coming to an end at Purdue this year. That's O'Bannon short on the three. And how about Illinois normally would push that ball up the floor. Very good job on their part not to throw anything away. They want to force that clock to be part of their team. And Williams pinned, so they go back outside. And Illinois taking a little time with oh, it now with a nine-point lead. This is a smart basketball team. How about Powell? One more time. Bouncing around, and he's got everything going for him. Well, remember, Jim, the thing that got him started is that three-pointer where the clock was winding down, and since that time, he's been the best player on the floor. Here's the man that's got to pick it up right now if you're Louisville. Garcia has got to become active. Well, they're down by double digits now. First time in the game, and they have gone four minutes without a hoop. He's got to want the ball. Dean, top of the key. And Illinois. And look at this. Illinois normally, off that kind of a rebound, would be exploding. But right now, Bruce Weber says, we've got something up above this basket that is our teammate, and that is the clock. Perfect. And George on the hold. That'll send Augustine to the line. The Illini has scored 10 unanswered it was 50 49 tuesday amazing race the teams race through africa the wildlife gets in on the action how will they make it through crocodile infested waters you'll find out amazing race tuesday at 9 8 central on cbs two for augustine you know one thing about weber you're talking about his success this year all of that success has made this a very difficult week for him Six times this week in St. Louis, he has had to attend a presentation involving a Coach of the Year award ceremony for him. That's an all-time good news, bad news it story, is. isn't it? <laughs> coach, we're going to name you the Coach of the Year. Hey, gee, I need to be at practice. <laughs> and now, Illinois just sitting back, playing solid defense, and if you're Louisville, again, I'm going to beat on it. Garcia has to want the ball, and he's got to penetrate and make things happen. He's been much too passive. Lobs it. Good pass. Miles, good hands, and puts it up immediately. And Dean trying to chase it down back to Illinois. So that basket breaks the 11-point run by the Illini. Now we're going to see Rick Pitino basketball defensively. Got out of that zone, picking up full court man-to-man. -man, and let's see if they have the legs because you know this is not a deep team to put on a, a rush here with five minutes to go. They've had some great comebacks this year. And double digits four different times. Timeout called by Darren Williams. Well, these were the comeback teams last Saturday. But Louisville's 20-point deficit was in the first half of that comeback win over West Virginia. Down 10 now, 5-7. 
You can go to NCAAsports.com, Pontiac, slash Pontiac, and vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the tournament. $100,000 on the line for the winning school, and you can win a trip to Monday night's championship game by calling the action online. Here we go, Illinois looking the inbound, and that one got away from D. Brown. It's going back to Louisville. As I said, this is Rick Pitino basketball. He had to get out of that zone defense. Jim, we talked about almost mirror image of this game. They were down 11 with 553 to play against Marquette. They came back to win that ball game. Down 11 with nine minutes to go against Memphis and came back and won a game. And then down 17 to Cincinnati in the first half and came back to win. And then we all know about the 20 point comeback against West Virginia. So Louisville has done it throughout the course of this year time and time again. And they were down four to La Louisiana Lafayette with nine to play in the first round. Big shot comes up short, but Miles secures it. Bannon driving in. And oh, that's a charge. That's a charge on O'Bannon. Boy, if you Powell talk about it, Billy. You talk about the most valuable player today. How about Powell? Both ends of the floor. Steps in and takes it. And knew he had drawn the charge as soon as the contact was made. That's the first on O'Bannon. Now George in, Jenkins in. Only two team fouls in this half on Illinois. Tough to press a team with three guards on the floor, all of which can handle the point. Now, they do go back into the zone. Kind of surprises me. Ten down, clock. Not able to force any tempo right here, staying in that zone. Rick Pitino showing a lot of confidence in his primary defense. I think this is a tough team to go ahead and sit back on, though. They're patient, they pass. Yep. Yeah, they know they'll have to trigger something now. It's Luther Head. And for the fourth time in this half. I don't like that strategy at all. This team is too patient. They've got too many good perimeter shooters, and they're unselfish. I think you're going to have to force some tempo here if you're Rick Pitino. Luther Head knocks it down with two seconds on the shot clock. Garcia gives it up, and there, Miles dunks it home. There he is, Jim. When he becomes aggressive, things can happen. Ahead. He knows better than to launch it early. And now Rick Pitino holds up five and says, let's go man to man. Play some pressure. Trapping out of it. They're going to have to play heavy. Try to get the ball out of Williams' hands. Stop. There it is. Miles. Williams to defend. Miles gets the hoop down the nine. And here's where it's going to be a little bit of a gut check for Louisville. Good job on their part. They've got quickness. They are not going to have to worry about stamina now. It's a gut check time. Luther Head knocking down the threes. Four and a half. 3.31 to go. And take note, Louisville with two timeouts remaining. Gene Cady, boy, it's like he's on the bench, but he's... In the stands in the Illinois fan section, cheering on his longtime assistant, Bruce Weber. And remember how we talked in the first half about Weber's brother, Dave, who won the state class 2A championship last week at Glenbrook North High School in Illinois? Anxiety over, written all over his face as well. It's tough to press this team, but that's what Louisville has to do. They cannot afford to let them sit back against that zone because they will just occupy the clock. Nice scribble. Yeah, Augustine showing some nifty ball handling. Move the head, they leave him alone, and blocked out. It'll still be Illinois ball, no foul. Down to 16 seconds. And there's another timeout, this initial timeout on the floor with 3.11 remaining. Back with Illinois leading, thanks to Roger Powell and Luther Head in this half. Luther has hit six threes in the game, and that ties a career high. Jimmy just spotted up outside the zone. The team is so patient, they pass so well. You give him good looks, and he will explode. In this half, Illinois is 13 for 21. Only one team all year long shot above 50% against Louisville for the game. And Illinois is right on that mark. They have 16 seconds, Illinois, on the shot clock. Williams takes too long. Wow, it gets, I thought that yeah. might have been a uh, the five count. I thought so, too, but he got away with it, called the timeout. Got the timeout granted. 
Tomorrow, a new episode of Cold Case Haunted by a Childhood Memory. One detective persuades his team to reopen a 42-year-old mystery on Cold Case tomorrow on CBS. Here we go, 16 on the shot clock. And they inbound with ease this time. Gonna have to take it himself, down under 10. Cannon comes over, five on the clock. D. Brown delivers, over to head, partially blocked, and George takes it back. Tough to, to, get, it over. Tech, tough to get it over Garcia. Fans getting a little antsy right now. And there again, Garcia gave the ball up much too easily. And that one spins in and out for O'Bannon. Wide open. It's Powell. He waits. He How gets it. How about that smart play? Realized that O'Bannon would try to go immediately for the block. A wide open is Miles. But there is Powell closing in on him. And Nothing Miles drops. misses the half hook. And rebound, Illinois. And as we check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Three-point field goals and six more by the Illini. Complete stat, CBSSportsLine.com. And Jim, in an NCAA tournament, whether it be in the Final Four earlier, you see when players are starting to recognize that this ball game, and in some cases for a senior, the career is over. Miles tapping. Augustine on the back right there realizing hey I've got to make those plays and didn't do it one and one Augustine gets the roll up to 12 Louisville took a lead early in this half and there's Megan we Weber coach's wife and the daughters one more for Augustine Louisville took that lead and they held it for less than a minute that's all Augustine who has played solid basketball as we said Big Ten tournament MVP never dominates, but always solid. They have now tied the largest lead of the semifinal. They've got 30 of their 37 in this half from Powell and Head. O'Bannon from the line. Thanks oh, it in. Didn't call that one, but got it anyway. And here again, why it's so tough to press this team. Point guards all over the floor, aren't they? They have to do, they have to try to do what Illinois did to Arizona last Saturday night. And I thought that Louisville waited a little bit too long to go into this pressure defense. Not that it might have changed the course of the game, but that zone strategy just is not working. Head driving, and he too will head to the line. That's Dean on a hand check. And this Illinois team, you don't get to be the number one team in the country and stay there basically for two-thirds of the season like they did without being solid at all aspects of the game. They shoot 73% from the line. And it's 78%. One Cardinal legend who uh, is starting to realize is uh, running short on time now. And there's Daryl Griffith, Dr. Duncanstein, 25 years ago this year. He led Louisville to the national championship. And you know, they honored that team's silver anniversary at a game in February. And Coach Patino allowed his team to stay on the floor and watch the ceremony and instead of taking them at halftime to the locker room. So this is more important that you see what it's all about and how the legend endures. And they had not lost a game coming into tonight since they were there that silver anniversary night. 33-3 and three that team was. Griffin, of course, the most outstanding player in that Final Four. And in the first round, they beat Lute Olsen in Iowa. Garcia, that one slides off the back of the rim. Garcia having a nightmare of a ball game. And was one for eight in that first half. Had a lot of good looks, but he just kind of became passive in the second. He is two for ten for the game now. And both baskets were inside hoops. Outside shot wasn't far. One Powell. minute to go. Powell is hiding down on the baseline. I tell you, you can color this building orange right now. It is absolutely orange almost everywhere. You look as Williams adds two more. Total dominance now. This club is so smart. They know how to use the clock. They have great passes. Extremely unselfish. They're number one until somebody shows them otherwise. That's right. And there'll only be one more game to do that. Miles inside, and there the senior, his 
career coming to a close at Louisville, fifth year senior. And the final 25 seconds, and Illinois is going to have an experience the school has never experienced in 100 years of basketball. They are going to be playing in the championship game. They've been to Final Fours, but never to the big one, Jim, as you pointed out. And great sportsmanship shown, which has been one of the qualities that have made this tournament so great. The kids play their heart out, but they understand it can only be one winner. Illinois on to the championship game for the first time ever. and one on the season. Well, Jim, that matches the all-time winningest year in college basketball history. Illinois wins it 72-57. The final score was the largest margin of the game. Illinois is in the final. We'll hear from Greg Gumbel, plus we'll have the interview with the winners when we come back to St. Louis. The final score of game one of our national semifinals doubleheader. Illinois, a 72-57 winner over Louisville as we welcome you back to St. Louis. Everyone coming up next, North Carolina will meet Michigan State. The tip to set for that game at 8.49 p.m. Eastern time and the winner to meet Illinois in the championship game here in St. Louis on Monday night. Our Chevy MVPs of the game for Louisville, Ellis Miles with 17 points and seven rebounds. For the Fighting Illini, Roger Powell, nine of 13 from the field, 20 points total. Illinois will make its first ever appearance in a national championship game. For more, let's go back down courtside now. Jim Nansen, Billy Packer. Jim. All right, thank you, Greg. And uh, Roger, have you ever had a better half of basketball in your life? You got 18 in the second half. First of all, I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I give all the credit to him. I prayed at halftime, and he came through once again. And, and Coach and everybody played great today. It's, it's such a blessing. I, I, I enjoy myself today. Was it your best hat? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Coach, Bruce, do you spell Illinois T-E-A-M? You've got to be so proud of this group of kids. Well, there's no doubt. They move the ball. They share it. They're smart. They know how to play. You know, and we guard. You know, Darren did a great job on Garcia. Never let him get going. We talked about taking care of the ball. We had one turnover at half. We talked about our big guys being the force, which they were. Roger, James, Nick. Jack, and then we talked about our bench. Those three Bs made the difference in the game. Congratulations, you're on your way. Congratulations, One more to go. guys. April 4th. We'll see you Monday night in the championship game, and we'll continue from the final four in just a moment. Now it's time to look at the four finalists for the Pontiac Game Change. Welcome back to the Edward Jones Dome, everyone, here in St. Louis, Missouri. Coming up, the second national semifinal matchup, Michigan State against North Carolina. Tip time is set for 8.49 Eastern, the winner to meet Illinois on Monday night. Speaking of the Michigan State Spartans, they'll take part in game two here in just a few moments. And earlier this evening, our Armin Katayan spoke with Michigan State's Alan Anderson and Paul Davis. Paul, a lot of tall North Carolina timber inside, including Sean May. How do you deal with him? Well, I think our biggest key is going to be uh, keeping him off the uh, uh, off the boards. And I mean, he's obviously outstanding rebounder, and I think he gets a lot of easy buckets off uh, offensive rebounds. So uh, I think that, and also keep him away from the basket because um, he's definitely a low post threat. Alan, you guys have had a roller coaster season, but you're obviously on a roll. You've knocked off a one seed, a two seed. What kind of advantage might that be against another one seed in North Carolina? I'm um, just sticking to the game plan. I mean, all we did to get here, uh, taking it game by game and uh, not looking over anybody. Uh, we know they have a great team all down the line. So just taking it, you know, each player of a player and respect them. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Armin, thanks. We're joined once again by our colleague Dick Emberg. Back in 2002, Shane Battier's four-year contributions at Duke inspired Dick to honor student-athletes who stay in school to play for four full years. Dick? 
Greg, it's great to be back. We're privileged to announce the winner tonight. It is a refreshing contrast to those who leave a program early or don't even go to the college program. Our past winners, Juan Dixon, David West, and last year, Jameer Nelson. And tonight, we salute the 10 finalists for the 2005 Senior Class Award. Taylor Coppenrath, Vermont. His 25-point average was second best in the nation, three times Conference Player of the Year. Travis Diener, Marquette, a wooden finalist, averaged seven assists and 20 points a game. Dukes, Daniel Ewing, two years the Blue Devils captain, led Duke to 115 wins in his four seasons. Oklahoma State's Joey Graham earned first-team All-Big 12 and third-team All-America honors. John Lucas, Oklahoma State, continuing his flair for the three-point dramatic. Lucas, number two all-time in conference assists. Lawrence Roberts, Mississippi State, led the conference in rebounding and double-doubles. Roberts, two-time SEC Player of the Year. Wayne Simeon, Kansas, a consensus All-America, the only senior, 20.3 average, led the Big 12. Chris Thomas, Notre Dame, a four-year starter. Thomas, the Irish all-time number one in assists, steals, and games played. Roni Turioff, Gonzaga, demon at both ends of the court, named West Coast Conference Player of the Year. And Hakeem Warwick, Syracuse, first-team All-American, finished as the number four all-time scorer in Orange Man history. And those are the 10 finalists for the 2005 Senior Class Award. And we're proud to announce that the winner this year is Wayne Simeon of the Kansas Jayhawks, who joins us here in St. Louis. Congratulations, Wayne, and you're on your road to a degree in May, I understand. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, the, the memories and the relationships that I've built, uh, you know, coming back from my senior year, you know, you can't put a price tag on that. And then, uh, you know, the most important thing of all is when I'll be receiving my diploma in May. Quickly, who do you pick in the second game, North Carolina, Michigan State? Well, I have teams scattered on all four of the teams here, but I definitely got to go with uh, North Carolina on this one. I have an opportunity to play for Coach Williams for two years and knowing him for since 1996. You know, I definitely got to stick by him. Wayne and all the seniors will be honored at a gala banquet in Kansas City on April 30th. And well-deserved. Congratulations to you, Wayne. Yes, thank you very much. We remind you, the women have also reached the end of the road to the Final Four, and their national semifinals will be played tomorrow evening in Indianapolis. Game one on ESPN features Baylor against LSU. Game two has Michigan State against Tennessee. North Carolina head coach Roy Williams alone in the locker room getting his thoughts together his team getting ready to face Michigan State will continue real shots of the nighttime skyline of the city of St. Louis provided by monster today's the day we're closing in on tip off for our second national semifinal game of the day Michigan State against the University of North Carolina let's take a look now at State Farm covers the court team profiles of Michigan State and North Carolina the Spartans have won a couple of national championships in 2000 under Tom Izzo in 1979 with Magic Johnson well that 2000 team of course is all about the will and the skill of the team please but point guard is the biggest weakness for these Spartans and that could be a big problem tonight against North Carolina and their outstanding point guard Raymond Phelps. All right. Meanwhile, North Carolina making its record 16th Final Four appearance. Tar Heels were national champs in 1982 with Michael Jordan. They also won in 57 and 93. Boy, that was a star-studded club. Jordan, Perkins, Kenny Smith, Kenny, um, Kenny Black, a number of outstanding players. That was a terrific team. Sam Perkins, James Worthy as well. I don't know if this team is quite as talented as that one, but they're really close, and they've got a chance perhaps to add another championship to the Tar Heels tradition. All right, guys, for more information, go to the team page on CBSSportsLine.com, presented by State Farm. Welcome back to the Edward Jones Dome here in St. Louis. There's the final score from game one, 72-57 Illinois, a winner. A short while ago, Bonnie Bernstein with Louisville coach Rick Pitino. Of all of the scouting you did, Rick, on this Illinois team, could you have anticipated Roger Powell powering that team with 18 in the second half? Well, I just listened to Steve Alford say it about five times that he felt they played him close because they stopped Powell and he was the key to the game, uh, certainly. But sometimes when you play zone, you can't dictate who you stop because some guy's going to be open. He played brilliantly. Um, unfortunately, when time was running out, we had a shift man. We couldn't defend them man to man. 
Could you talk a little bit about that strategy? They started hitting that flurry of threes in the second, and you didn't switch from zone to man until pretty late in the game. Can you talk about the timing of that? Well, we knew we couldn't go to man to man because of underneath that of bounds plays that we played, they were getting open, they were getting high percentage shots. And we were, you know, in the first half, they were shooting 30 something percent. We were not going to stay in the game if we went to man too early. We could not guard them. A man to man really left us about 10 or 15 games ago. And this is the best attack team in college basketball. So we tried to make our run. We had a chance to take the lead, didn't block out and didn't get back in our zone running the lane. But um, I'm proud of our guys, you know, we won an Olympic medal. That's our NCAA Final Four ring. And uh, real proud of the season. They were the better basketball team. Coach, thanks so much for the time. Congratulations to Rick Pitino and the Louisville Cardinals on a terrific season. Sometimes you don't bring your A game to the arena. Sometimes you have it taken away from you. Which is it that happened to Louisville tonight? Well, I think it was taken away. I think because Louisville couldn't penetrate and score consistently, it made it easier for Illinois. And then I thought controlling the backboards was a huge factor in this game. Illinois did it because James Augustine got 11 rebounds. That's the fourth time he's had double digits in his last five games. Francisco Garcia and Salim Stoudemire of Arizona, the last game, combined to shoot four of 23 being guarded by Darren Williams. He is as good an on-the-ball defender as I've ever seen at the collegiate level, and whoever they play Monday night better not plan on getting a lot of points from whoever Darren Williams is guarding. His last five games, Francisco Garcia averaged 20 points a game. Tonight, he had four. Meanwhile, Michigan State about to take the court against North Carolina. Let's listen to Spartans head coach Tom Izzo, who spoke with his team a short while ago. I want you now to sit down, get yourself ready in any way, shape, or form that you can. If it's to listen to music, if it's to lay on the floor, you do what you do best. You do nothing different than you've done the other 34 games that you've played, and we'll be fine. But when we're ready to get out, we're going to have our pregame talk as far as the um, going over the things, eight-minute mark of this game, and then we'll fill you in exactly when we're allowed to go out. All right? Yeah. Go. 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 Go together on three. One, two, three. Together. Michigan State Spartans getting ready to go. And no sooner had the Illinois game ended, the Illini fans started chanting MSU because they'd like to see their Big Ten brethren in the championship game and probably like to beat them as well. Let's talk about who has the potential to provide some Pontiac game-changing performances in this second game. Clark? Well, I think you start with Michigan State. It could be any number of guys, but I'm going to look at Shannon Brown and perhaps Allen Anderson and maybe Chris Hill breaking out of his shooting slump, but let's look at Shannon Brown offensively and defensively. I think he can have a huge impact on this game. You can't overthink this. The three juniors for North Carolina, especially Sean May. Sean May is the best player here at the Final Four. Assuming they keep going to him inside like the way they have, I don't think Michigan State can deal with Sean May inside. Pick a winner. Got to go with North Carolina, and I think one of the real X factors in this game is how is Michigan State going to shoot from behind the three-point line? We saw Wisconsin's success against North Carolina's defense can sometimes be suspect. I'm not sure the Spartans have the shooters to take advantage, and I like the big advantage of Raymond Felton at the point guard. We wanted to see Illinois and North Carolina on Monday night, and that's what we're going to see, Clark. Well, I don't agree with Seth there. I do agree that Sean May is going to be a handful for Michigan State, but I think at the point of attack, Shannon Brown, Allen Anderson, Maurice Hager, a number of guys can defend Felton and keep him from being effective. That's going to negate Sean May's advantage inside. I like the ability of Michigan State to shoot better than they have all year behind the three-point line because I sense they're ready to have that kind of a breakout game. I like the Spartan. I'm looking for an all-Big Ten final on Monday night. All right, gentlemen, you heard it here. Coming up, Michigan State, North Carolina, the winner advances to Monday night's national championship game against Illinois. Jim Nance and Billy Packer will have the call after this message and a word from your local.